So first thing, um, we're going to do a little introduction since this is the first episode. Hello, everybody. Mobius One here, bringing you the first episode of still an untitled Star Wars D&D series because I still don't have a title for it yet. But <laughs> by the time this gets posted to YouTube, it should have a title. Um, but yeah, we're got... Uh, if not, suggest one in the comments. Exactly. We've got uh, four people are going to be playing this with us, this series. Uh, first off, we have Andrew Alderon playing. Uh, go ahead and you say your character name and tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Andrew. People on the internet call me Andrew Alderon. Uh, my character is Talon Darkstar. And I'm not sure how much of my little backstory I want to say, but uh, he used to live a very, very uh, unsavory life, but has since... Um, changed his ways a little bit and now uh lives life a little bit more carefully than he used to and what class are you playing i'm a scoundrel cool cool all right next up we have uh cart add to cart uh go ahead what class are you playing and Snap. very basic backstory i gotta, I gotta start the record what's that okay um setting up my own recording for backup purposes nice. um so i am playing bendak kelborn and he is a mandalorian and um He's actually the last of his Kelborn clan, so he is on a journey to discover himself as a soul. And he's gravelly. Yeah, yeah. He sings Nickelback <laughs> on the radio so that his <laughs> voice is deep and gravelly by the time he arrives for... Nice. <laughs> All right. Next, we have Hot Dog. Hot Dog is the only non-human in the party. Uh, go ahead. And hmm. Same thing. What class are you? And uh, tell us a bit about yourself. I am typically go by Hot Dog Zanzibar on them internet, and I'm playing a Wookiee tech specialist named Romarin, and uh, he's about 125 years old, which is, I think, still fairly young for a Wookiee, if my lore yeah. is correct, yeah. understanding of it. Um, he's, uh, he's kind of an enigmatic character. He kind of hangs in the background, doesn't say a lot, but... Uh, He's very loyal, and um, we'll see We'll see what, what that gets. All right, and then rounding out the group, uh, we've got Kurgle. Kurgle, tell us what class you are and uh, who you're playing. Yeah, I'm Kurgle. I am playing a human scout called Trod Dust Runner. Uh, he grew up on Tatooine and is now thankful that he's off that disgusting dirt ball and enjoying himself exploring the galaxy. All right. Well, uh, I guess the first thing we'll do is just go over uh, a little bit. I mean, I know we had a practice session just so everybody get familiar with the rules a little bit. Um, but none of you are, have been officially introduced to your captain who you've been working for over the past couple uh, years. Actually, a couple of you have been working for him longer. But on the same tab as all of your character sheets... Uh, the journal tab under handouts, you should now see a new entry at the bottom for a Desmond Thravic. Do you guys see that? Yep. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and pop that open. You'll see a nice token there, picture <laughs> of him, and a uh, very basic description I typed up. Captain of the respectable Bantha. He's been your boss <laughs> for quite nice. some time. Love it. For running a variety of missions for him, he pays you well enough to keep you uh, to er Keep earn, very nice typo there, to earn your loyalty despite the fact that he's a very secretive individual. All right, so that's who you've been working for. Uh, it's kind of how the four of you kind of get along. You don't know each other that great, but you've worked with each other on, you know, errands here and there. Maybe he'll take two of you and send you off to retrieve something or do, you know, like a deal, do a drop off or something somewhere in the galaxy. And uh, yeah, the respectable Bantha is a YT2400 that you all are basically living out of. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the YT2400, it's, um, well, you know what? I was just picturing it. In my How head about I show it to you? Oh, I just Ooh. Google it. That's pretty cool. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. Yep, that's just as I uh, pictured it would be. So this is the respectable Bantha. Uh, we're not actually going to be playing here yet, but I figured I'd show it to you since you are familiar with it. You've been living off of it for quite a bit. 
Um, and you'll notice that while you do have pretty much free roam around it, you none of you have ever seen the inside of the cockpit. The cockpit has, uh, has always been a very secret place that uh, Dez, as he likes to be called, has kind of kept hidden from everyone else. He's the only one allowed inside. But this is your base of operation, so to speak. Okay? Dez, Dez there seems you. to me like he should have an Australian accent. <laughs> uh, I don't know how well I can pull that off. I think I might offend some people, but we'll see. Let's offend the internet. <laughs> All right, so we're going it's, to it's space. It's space accent anyway, so you'll only you'll only insult people in space. That's Where do right. I find the uh, information about the captain? The sheet that you're talking. About? If you click the journals tab in the top right, the same tab that gotcha. you click to open your character sheet, it should be listed at the bottom. I see it. Cool, thanks. Now, you guys uh, have each just returned from your own mission. Kurgle and Desmond went off and did something, while Hot Dog, Cart, <laughs> and Andrew, the three of you, went to that camp and came back with a fourth party member, a girl named Mira. Um, now, Des was very happy to see her. The two of them were actually hanging out in the cockpit of the respectable Bantha, while the four of you kind of just, you know, did whatever around on the uh, on the ship until you arrived at your destination, Nar Shada. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so here we have some streets of Nar Shada. Uh, the four of you and Des and Mira, actually all six of you, uh, landed, went for a little bit of a walk, and eventually came to a nightclub. As you do. No, mate, I don't want any death sticks. <laughs> the old Republic uh, PTSD is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this planet. <laughs> hey, let me buy you a drink, man. All right, so here off the right-hand side of the screen, um, you can see the nightclub. You're all kind of situated at a table in the corner of the nightclub. There's some music playing, no live performances. It's just music coming out of, like... Uh, old, you know, seems like it's been there since the place opened kind of speaker system. Um, there's a couple, Interact. yeah, a couple aliens situated around the bar or in the nightclub rather. None, uh, none too noticeable. Some grands, uh, the heck is it called? Quarren, uh, Rodian, some Trandoshans in the bottom corner and a grand bartender behind the nightclub. Um, Y'all just kind of sit down. Desmond looks at you guys and is like, uh, I I can't do a space Australian accent. <laughs> um, says, all right, mates, you all hang out here. I'll be back. Uh, me and Mira, we got to go take care of some business and we'll be back. That was, that that was the bad. best you're getting. You got to channel your inner <laughs> rest. Um, from the Clone Wars. With yeah, a bit of Steve Irwin. All right, boys. Yeah, that'd be New, <laughs> that's New Zealand. All right. It's close enough. As they say that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that Trandoshan. He's a beauty. <laughs> oh, God. They leave. And the door closes behind them. And they disappear into the streets. And you're not sure where they went. Now, um, I know you guys can see the streets here. I'm not going to put every single individual person that's roaming the streets, but you all know, well, most of you hopefully know, Nar Shaddaa is a pretty packed place. So you can imagine there are just civilians wandering around the streets. Mm -hmm. um, you have Football. to use a little bit of your imagination for that. Imagination. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it. Basically, you guys have been left here to kind of hang out uh, while Dez and Mira go handle some sort of business that you're not entirely sure where they're going or what they're doing. Um, but they said they'll be back eventually. And I give the floor to you. What do you think they're doing? Oh, man, I don't know. So, well, tell me more about this, this woman, Mira. Well... well we were sent to go to go uh, rescue her. She got into some bad situations. I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, the credits were handed to me, so I did what I was told to do. It was quite the experience, I'll tell you that. Oh, man, but uh, apparently she's a big deal. I don't know. I think she's a pretty useless person. I mean, what does Des see in her that she gets you know, captured by those Rodians over there and... 
I don't know if it's a, a, I'm tending to believe it's a romantic thing, but I kind of think there's some uh, some diplomatic reason why she was captured and why we were paid to go get her back. I'm not bothered. She was a paycheck. <laughs> oh, man. Any difficulty down on the planet? Nothing we couldn't handle. It was actually pretty fun. You should have seen me in combat. Oh, man. Cart sure does that. like to shoot things. Especially Womp Rats. <laughs> As you guys are talking, some uh, Trandoshans walk in from outside. Ugh. They just walk in. They don't really notice you. They walk pretty straight up to the bar. Are they armed? One of them's got a uh, blaster on his side. I guess that's pretty par for the course for a Narshada nightclub. I guess pretty much everyone in here is armed, right? I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is Cart owes me a drink. Right. All right. <laughs> get on, get right on that. <laughs> and so I get up and uh, head over to the bar. While you approach the bar, um, actually, Cart, why don't you roll a listen ch uh, check for me? Ooh, copy that. Not that I'll understand a word of it. They might be speaking in basic. Mm. <laughs> All right. As you approach the bar, you uh, overhear one of the Trandoshans talking or mention the word. Actually, whoa, my one screen is super laggy. Hang on a second. Having trouble with your vid screen over there, are you? <laughs> I think I might. <laughs> You're getting DDoS. Just switch off and on again, Australians. <laughs> so I guess it's safe to assume they're speaking basic. I know I saw your roll is 14. Go ahead and roll again just so I can make sure I'm not lagging anymore. All right. Okay, cool. Um... Yeah, so they are speaking basic, and you uh, you don't hear what they're talking about, but you do catch them say something about the death of Jabba the Hutt. What? Okay. That can't be real. He still owes me money. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Good luck with that. Oh, man. The uh, bartender is getting returning with the drinks that the Trandoshans ordered, and uh, he comes up to you. And he doesn't really seem to uh, be too excited. He's just like, yeah, what do you want? No, I'm going to yell. A... Oh, go ahead. I'm going to yell over to uh, Cart while he's at the bar since he's he's buying me the drink that I he owed me, and I'm just going to yell, you know what I want? Yeah, the usual. <laughs> One Corellian ale, and That's one right. Therian brandy on the rocks. He says, "All right, be right back," and he disappears behind the uh, behind the counter. Um, Cart, why don't you? Since you heard them mutter something, let's see. What kind of knowledge might you have? Hmm. Why don't you just roll roll an intelligence check for me? Oh boy. I'm sure that'll go swimmingly. Good luck. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, luckily, Jabba the Hutt's a pretty popular guy. You know of him. And uh, you did happen to uh, hear of some something going down on Tatooine recently. And uh, you pretty much put two and two together and realize that, uh, yeah, it looks like Jabba the Hutt might be dead. Hopefully his own Sarlacc ate him. I'm, I'm still contemplating the part where this affects me. Bartender comes back with yeah. your Corellian Ale and your Viserian Brandy. 20 credits. Yeah, you got it. And I uh, hand over my credit chip. to. Alright, deduct 20 credits from your total top right corner of the character sheet. I'm just going to take... I have a notepad open. I'm just going to write down the money that I spend and just deduct right, it later instead go. of tinkering with the character. All right, sounds good. 
Yeah, by the way, so, having a notepad open to uh, keep track of some things or maybe write down names won't be a terrible idea. Though you will yeah. be able to go back and watch these later, I guess, if you missed anything. Yeah, I have trouble remembering people's names, so that's why I wrote it down. Bro, you want anything to drink or what? What the hell do Wookiees drink? <laughs> Whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it'll be in like an Andre the Giant sized glass though. <laughs> yeah. Um, shoot. All right. So let's just say you guys have been hanging out here. Picture of blue milk for the Wookiee. You guys have been hanging out here for a bit. People have come and gone. Uh, let's see. These two guys are gone. This Rodian's gone. These Trandos have left. This is everyone who's been left in here. A couple of people have come in and like got some stuff and then left. It's been about, we'll say two hours and you've gotten no word uh, from Des. By the way, um, I do want to explain real quick on your character sheets under gear, uh, you have something called a Thravic comlink. I know I talked a little bit about it in uh, Discord just so you guys got an idea of what it is. But basically what it is, it's a special comlink that all every member of the Thravic crew has it allows you to communicate with each other, but no one else. It's an encrypted, it, it transmits on an encrypted frequency. So only other Thravic comlinks can pick up its signal. But that also means that you can only communicate with other Thravic comlinks as well. Cool. Presumably it also means that anything we discuss over that could be listened in on by other Thravics. Uh, we'll say it's a, it's a push to talk kind of deal so you have to hit a button to key into it kind of like a walkie talkie uh sure but what i mean is we won't be the only five people right. using that or is it just the crew of this ship uh it's uh supposedly anyone who joins the crew of the uh, respectable bantha gets one yeah. but you don't know you're right there could be others out there with them right which could be an issue if this captain doesn't give us a whole lot of information as it is who knows well i mean so I we're guess doing was... jobs him so I, I doubt he'd want to sell us out we're you know we're good labor oh man while you guys were down on that planet i was helping the old captain and um yeah that was weird really <laughs> strange what did he have uh, you doing well we we went out to the solust system and like i mean i was just doing some menial work for him but he was really intently collecting readings on what were originally a, a group of ships like building up there but by the time we left i mean it was it was practically i mean almost an armado it was it was just more ships than i've ever seen assembling together terrifying do you, do you know have any idea whose ships they were he was very roll, cagey uh, roll an intelligence about. check kurgle Ooh, ooh, uh i can do that maybe uh, oh, oh baby! Matt, Matt, oh baby! Oh, crap! Yeah, of course I know. <laughs> you recognize the uh, designs and the uh, the silhouettes of what are very obviously the majority of the ships were Mon Calamari or uh, origin, with a couple other ship designs in there that are known to be used by the Rebel Alliance. Hmm. Ooh, so yeah, maybe, I mean, it, it was all Mon Calamari ships, so maybe the Rebel Alliance, who knows? I wonder what they're mobilizing for. I don't know, but I mean, Dravik, well, Des, seemed very excited about collecting the info. I mean, I can only, I can only think he thinks he can turn a profit off that information somehow. Well, I would imagine there's some Imperials around that would love to have that information. That was and Des really yeah. loves getting paid. I too like to get paid, but part of me doesn't really want to help the Imperials, if you know what I mean. Kind of have a problem with authority. Speaking of which, I'm getting impatient. With what? Yeah, I'm tired of Where's waiting for captain? him too. Oh, yeah. Of Des? Yeah, he took off with that girl and he's been gone for hours. And this, this mirror that you collected, she wasn't pulling her own weight too much on your little excursion. No, she got captured. 
We're kind of, sure, we're kind but of after you meaning. after you collected her, was she able to contribute in any meaningful way? No, I and literally had to carry to her do. out. Bro carried her out. She was pretty banged up, but we just hopped on the ship and left. Mission was complete. We didn't want to hang out. Yeah, yeah, fair. By the but way, I... did any of you guys hear? Um, apparently, Jabba the Hut is dead. What? what? I hope, hope none of you guys were hoping to. You know. I hope. I hope you didn't pay too yeah, much for that info. Working. Surely that's bullshit. There's no way. Just I'm going to be really some Trandos talking about it. Those guys at the bar? Yeah, as I was walking up. I'll look over Are you to the sure bar. you it heard them? It doesn't correctly? look like they're there anymore, right? I'm surprised they lowered themselves speaking basic. Let's see. Um Kurgle and Andrew roll spot checks. Ooh. Since you two are facing into the nightclub, and Cart and Hot Dog appear to be facing the wall. The chowy. Okay, oh. Kurgle, you notice that when Cart says that he believes uh, Jabba the Hutt's dead, the Quarren, sitting alone at that table, turns his head in your direction. Andrew, you don't see that. I'll I, sort of, I, I'll, I'll, I'll gesture argument. towards him to like lower his voice a little. To who? All of us? Uh, to it was um, uh, Ben Dark, Ben Dark, right? That was talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll just like gesture just above the table at him to lower the volume and like give him a wink towards the table behind him. Somebody listening to us or what? Yeah, I'll give him like nod. You know, yeah. Well, All right. Well, I uh, I am reacted. not really paying attention to that because I'm just you know looking at Daxon's reaction. So I'm just going to keep talking at the same tone. Yeah. And but... talk about you know it, it kind of makes sense. I mean I heard about you know some um, events going down on Tatooine around the same time. So I, I think it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Oh. Times are changing. Yeah. And my some uh, of list of employers is getting smaller. Some of the huts gonna muscle in there and take over, though. Surely, I mean, absolutely. If they're not there already, there's no question. If they're not already squabbling over it, they're always yeah. after each other. Uh, all back. four of you roll listen checks. Oh, jeez. Wow. Yeah, everyone's um, really good at listening. Apparently, <laughs> everybody except Kurgle. <laughs> Everybody except Kurgle, you think you might have heard what sounded like a large bang or explosion of some kind outside. Pretty far away, though. Ooh, you guys hear that? You think that's got something to do with our buddy Dez? Well, hopefully not. Well, we should probably go check if we want to continue to get paid. Hey, what? Yeah. All right. Let me finish my drink first, and I down the rest of my Viserian brandy. The Quarren gets up and walks outside. I'm going to follow that guy because uh, I think he's got the same idea that I do. Are you gonna... are you just going to get up and walk away or are you going to like sneak like stealthily kind of walk behind him? Or are you just making it, you know, just walking casually? I'm, I'm going to wait a, a second or two so he can get some distance because we said there's there's like a crowd this is crowded streets out here yes uh, so i'm just gonna slowly get up and walk behind him but keep my distance and uh kind of lower my head turn my collar up a little bit as i walk through the crowd why don't you, you guys come with me why don't you anyway I'm just gonna walk up and walk out uh andrew why don't you roll a move silently check anyway Oh wow! Wow, what do you? You have six points in that. Yeah, that's what You're I do. You're one sneaky snake. <laughs> sneaky sneaky snake. snake. Okay. No step on snake. Sneaky snake. All right, but Car, you're just not even trying. You're just like getting. On the no, front. I assume that he's either that corn is either unrelated or he's either he heard it too and he wants to investigate. His Okay. I'm going to try to, as Cart walks by, like, try to reach for his arm, like, to be like, no, wait, but he's too far ahead of me, and he's... he's... All right. Mopius, is this just a door to the north of where we yes, were sitting? Yes, sir. Those, those white and blue, like, dotted lines are just doors. 
So while I see my companions getting up and making for the front door, I'm going to head out this side door quietly and just start moving towards the front of the building on the off chance something's happened in this side. Okay. Um, by the way, those, just so we have a little understanding, those things that uh, is on the square to the top right of Kurgle is just kind of like a street lamp. It's uh, it's like a spire that sticks up out of the mm. ground with a green kind of like glow around it. Nice. Like the things I get stuck on when I'm on my swoop in Galaxy. Yeah, something like Hell this. yeah. Great. All right. Um, Kurgle. Actually, all four of you, uh, roll spot checks. What do your elf eyes see? Okay, everybody. My elf eyes see my feet, seemingly. Yeah, Kurgle's uh, looking. That's okay. There's a. Uh... So all of you are out. We'll say. Um... This Corrin dude just got walked off, and uh, you were right. He was kind of unrelated. He disappears into the crowd of people. Um, so it, the streets are very crowded, even though you don't see anybody. Just imagine. Um, however, the... That's probably why I don't see anything where I'm just getting Right, yeah, you just have... People are bumping into you. You're just struggling to stay on your feet, basically. Um, everybody seems to be walking to the left, to the west, I guess we'll say. And Cart... Andrew and Hot Dog, you guys see in the sky to the west what looks like debris falling? Mm. Oh my very, god. Very, very tiny bits, and they're leaving like a trail of glow. Like, like they're glowing pieces falling out of the sky. It almost looks like something blew up. Whoa, I guess that's what that noise was. Somebody, you think they were shot down? What even was that, though? Well, if it's up that high, I would imagine it's got to be some sort of ship. Put my hand to my comlink. What What do you guys see? I'm sort of swimming through the crowd a bit towards that end of the alley. It looks like it looks like something blew up over here. There's stuff falling from the sky. Now you actually but... don't have to swim. You're not actually swimming through them. They're they're almost like pushing you that way because everybody seems to be moving in that direction, Kurgle. So you actually. Yeah. As you're like making your way through the crowd, you get pushed as far up to here. Nice. Well, I guess I'm outside now, right? I just haven't moved my dude. Yeah, let's say there you go. You're all here. You guys aren't being pushed because there's nobody else inside the nightclub. But that's where you are. And there's a ton of people walking like right in front of us, right? Yeah, they're coming from um, the southeast and the northeast. So basically above and below the nightclub. And they're all kind of funneling into this middle street here by this purple speeder. Doesn't help that somebody double park their speeder in the street. Exactly. Yeah. Is there any? Uh, is there anybody walking by with a, maybe a... Um... A pocket on their jacket that's a little uh, loosey-goosey and a little open. <laughs> uh, spot check, I guess. Oh, you know what? You know what? Oh, well, yeah. Okay, there you go. Yes, there is. The uh, appears to be a noble, a uh, human male noble. He appear he's dressed like a noble anyway. I guess you're not sure if that's what he is. Um, is getting very roughly jostled by the crowd. Kind of going, no, wait, hold on. Stop. I don't. Where are we? No, I'm that way and he's you know getting pushed opposite the direction he wants to be going i'm gonna slide my hand in into his uh little coin purse or something and see if i can find anything of value like in his jacket pocket or something. very well do a sleight of hand check now oh, here he goes again <laughs> all right uh yeah <laughs> you reach into his bag and or you reach into his pocket rather and uh, pull out two credit chips. Ah. Oh, you're right now. Hey, they're, hey, they're credit Drinks chips. Drinks on no idea how many credits. That's right. I'm going to look at the couple of credits in my hand and realize how pitiful of a haul this is and just, like, throw it at, into the crowd, like, in disgust. It might be worth dude, millions. Dude, they're, they're, just because they're two credit chips doesn't mean they're worth two credits. It could be, like, a 100-credit chip and a 50-credit so it you're saying there's his... there are there are credit chips know. of it without a I'm asking Mobius. Did you say two credits as in it's worth two credits no. or it's just two separate two separate, two separate credit chips? Ah, shit. All right, well I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> screw me through the crowd and see if I can't find it on the ground while people are pushing me around. It's like, oh, roll it's like quick, you looted two roll credit a search cards check. from somebody and then said, Oh shit, no cash. Roll a search check. <laughs> 
15? Yeah. All right. Uh, amongst the boots kicking the credit chips around on the floor that you threw, you luckily ah. find one of them. The other has disappeared. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you don't even have to roll for this one. As you guys, Kurgle, you're now up to here. Um, as you guys are, as this is all going on, there is another bang, a very loud bang, lights up the entire street in a bright purple glow, and you all look up and see a bright purple firework explode in the sky. Uh, whoa. Just like a regular what? firework? Yep. Mm, like okay. a 4th of July firework. Oh, Look I guess uh, let's go see the show, I guess. I'm just going to grab someone who's running through the crowd like past me and like grab them by the collar and be like, what's going on? <laughs> All right, so you get bumped up to here. You grab, um, hmm, let me see. What kind of a check could this be? Make him grab uh, the noble like guy. Just someone <laughs> that looks like they're moving with purpose rather than... Okay, do a gather information check. Gather information. Oof, oof. No, they don't like it. Person looks at you and goes, I have no idea. Are we under attack? And disappears into the crowd. <laughs> now I Herbal see my companions. Point, I'll like, drive, look at them and be like, drive. what the hell? As, as, oh my god, I can't talk. Another firework goes off. This one lights up the entire street green. Um, at this point, the crowd near you has thinned enough that you're no longer being pushed around, but there are still people like making their way to the West. A couple people are coming back towards you now, people that had been, you know, over there already. And sorry, I missed what you guys just said. I was just asking Kurgle how to pronounce his name because I actually took my headphones off during his introduction so I could uh, I turn something coming. off in my room. It's how do you say it? Trod Dust Runner. Trod, okay. I'm going to make a conscious effort to try to use people's in-game names instead of calling everybody by the names I know them. <laughs> so I guess there's some kind of celebration going on. I don't know. I, I tend to avoid this planet. Is it is it like New Year on this planet? Roll an intelligence. Intelligent. Actually, wait. Let me see. You. And I mean, I'm, like, I'm asking that out loud rather than... than uh, does like, anybody want to make a check then? It would be... Because I know I don't know. <laughs> well, it would just I mean, be an intelligence check. I'll try. I mean, I could do it. I think Ben Deck would be pretty bored of just standing around um, gawking, and he's just going to start moving towards the direction that everyone's moving towards, thinking okay. he can Kurgle, you, uh, you know enough about Narshada that no, it is not any uh, particular holiday today. It's not a holiday. It's something special. Jack, where are you going? To go find out what's going on. Yes, okay, see, man. I'm There's with fireworks. You. It's got to be good. Well, I like a crowd that's distracted, so I'm gonna go with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like crowds at all, so I'd prefer to remain in this corner, but since you guys are going, I'll come with you. Come on, Ro. Uh, come on. Andrew, roll a spot check. Oh, please, please, please. Is it the other Let's go! The crowd is dissipated enough that as you start to walk down the street, you see the other credit ship laying on the floor. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> is there a way for me to like put this into a, a ATM, I guess, and check the balance or something? Oh, that would have been something to do before deciding to throw them away, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You hit a button on the chip, a little display lights up, and you can see that one of them has 100 credits on it, the other has 150. Oh, baby. <laughs> Maybe we don't need to steal anything else today. Well, right, so. I guess I got the next rounds on me, huh, boys? Yes, it is. As you guys start walking down the street, let's see. Uh, I don't actually have a token for this, so we're going to go back to imagination. Imagination. A woman with two young kids, a both a boy and a girl, are walking towards you from the west, and they're, the kids are like, cheering and swinging and skipping and the the woman is just like smiling can i put my foot out and trip one of the kids <laughs> you, okay? you put your foot out and trip the little boy the boy falls over and the mom spins around and goes what's wrong with you how can you be so cruel on such a happy day what what's today what's I today 
so happy about today. Wait, who at? So I'm trying to voices. Was that cart? Cart? Roll gather information. Yeah. Oh boy. Mm. Where is gathering? For there it is. Oh, minus two. Oh joy. Mm. Okay. Yo. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> nice. The woman goes, what do you mean? Hadn't you heard the news? The Emperor was just killed! What? Excuse me, what? Yes! The rebels, they attacked, and the Emperor, the whole Empire, it's... it's done! As she says this, a bunch more fireworks go off in the distance. Purple, red, green, blue, just... it's like, beautiful 4th of July demonstration. What? Well, that explains what we saw when we came outside. Fourth of July. Wow, so I guess Jabba the Hutt really is dead then, if all this is going down. So many Holy. big, important people in the galaxy dead in the same time sp That just doesn't add up. It's gonna be a mad power cap. She goes, what? Jabba the Hutt, the he died like a week ago. What? That's old news. And she picks up her kid and they walk off. Ah. Kid was crying. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds to me like there's a lot of money to be made. I was just thinking the same thing. If only that kid had a wallet. <laughs> now, as you guys are, you know, a, a, like accepting or, or starting to reconcile this information, two Trandoshans come out of the uh, building on your right and walk into the middle of the street. Is it the same guys from the cantina? Yep. Well, I guess we can continue carrying on and see uh, the rest of this fireworks display, huh? Maybe, uh, maybe Des oh, is yeah. there watching the show. With that kick. So as you're walking down the road, um, this building, first of all, I'll give you a quick rundown of what you guys see. So the building to your north, the one the Trandoshans just came out, looks like a beat up old hotel or uh, apartment complex of some kind. The one on the left, is a lot more well kept, almost like an office building of some sort. Um, very concealed, a lot of doors, but they all look reinforced. The building above you is very dilapidated in, in comparison. Um, above the nightclub, so the do Kurgle, the door that you came out of, the building that that's uh, kind of across the street from, mm -hmm. seems like it might be some sort of shop. And then you can't really tell what the buildings are to the west of you because you haven't been down there yet. But uh, just because the area of Nar Shaddai you're in, you imagine that there's probably like some shops and garages around you. Just above me, there's like another double door into this building. As I was walking up the street, did I get any view through that? Or is it like a solid sideways door rather it's, than a... Solid... It's a solid door, but you can see that it looks almost like... Um... I don't want to say like a loading dock, but like uh, a larger door that they could that could be used to bring in furniture or something into like this hotel. Yeah, it's the it's the it's the service entrance. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Space service entrance. Yeah, if you guys want to ask me any questions at describing the environment, please do. It's one of the things that I know as a DM I need to work on a little bit more. Okay. What's the smell like? <laughs> Bad. Yeah, it is Narshada. Lots of Narshada smells bad. There are a lot of bad. people here. Most of them are not very well very off. Greasy. Very oily. There's also Trent Oceans. Like the downtown version of Coruscant. I guess it's just like disgusting city. <laughs> I hate this. So the Trent Ocean uh, with the As gun. As saying that, I'm going to be like, I love this place. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys are... Uh, Mulling around the Trandoshan that came out, the one with the gun closest to you turns to you and in basic shouts at Cart. He goes, Hey, you, what's going on? Apparently, there's a celebration. The the, re the rebellion just won the war. He, he turns to his comrade, he goes, What? That's impossible. Watch the door. And he <laughs> walks to the west and disappears around the corner. What are you guys thinking? Should we watch this show so, or should we look for Dez and get off this rock? It smells like sh I still want to see what's down there. To the way Everyone went that way and came back smiling. So there's obviously something to see. Maybe there's a public broadcast or something that we can catch. I'm gonna, All right. Maybe I don't want to ask this other also, like, really. Surely Dez is probably going to be out. If he's finished his business, where else he's going to see all the fireworks and think what the fuck's going on? 
Yep. You're right. As you walk past the Trend Ocean, he goes, Hey, keep a wide berth. No entry. I turn to him and ask, Why not? Mm, are you trying to, like, intimidate him? Or are you just... Nope. I'm just All right. Asking. Gather information. <laughs> I like my skill rolls. Okay. Oh, that's weird. I oh, there's the, the die. He goes, mind your own business, pipsqueak. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to be intimidating. I'm going to say, who the carabast are you calling pipsqueak? <laughs> Fine, roll intimidate. While he's puffing his chest up to this guy and, and that guy's yelling at cart, I'm going to just very, very smoothly, quickly, and deliberately move my jacket out of the way of my right side. All right, so that'll give uh, a plus two to his intimidate. So that makes it a total of 16. Uh, no, that's, that's supposed to be the total. I saw a 12 when I rolled, so that's that's the total. Is four. Yeah, yeah, so your total intimidate was 14, but then since right. Andrew is brandishing his blaster oh, beside you, yeah. okay. I'll give you an additional plus two. Okay, okay. Well, so yeah. So he goes, ah, oh, I mean, I mean, just, you know, clan policy. And he backs up, like, against the door. Kind of, like, staying out of your way. All right, and I'll close my jacket back up. All right, well, I guess we're not going to be allowed entry without a bit of a tussle. Much as I love a good fight, I don't want to cause trouble, so... Well, we don't really need to go into this place anyway. Let's just go find Dez. I'm itching to leave. Um... Oh, in there. Andrew and Hot Dog roll intelligence checks. Actually, no. First, Kurgle, are you going with them? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to pick up the pace a little bit so I catch up on the tail of them. All right. All four of you roll spot checks first. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> Hot Dog. Got the ground all grumbly. He called Hot Dog kick. and Kurgle roll intelligence checks. Ooh. What the hell is nice it? one. So intelligence isn't a skill. That's one of your abilities. So it's in the top left. Okay. Um, Kurgle, I'm going to move you a little bit. So you're up here with them. As you guys are walking down the street, um, both Hot Dog and Kurgle notice that there appears that there, uh, the door to your left, the, the big door across from the Trandoshan, appears to have once had some sort of emblem or icon painted on it, and it appears to have been scraped, scratched or scraped off. Uh, Kurgle, you recognize it as the Imperial emblem. Hmm. I'll, I'll, like, quite quietly, but I'll put a finger up to, like, my micro-bead communicator, and I'll just say to the rest of the team, there's a, um, that that facility on the left used to be an Imperial facility. Look at the doorway. Yeah. I'm going to quickly grab my comm link and answer him. Because he's he's a few meters behind us, right? There's still a crowd yeah, of people yeah. at some point. Yep. You know, to some there's degree, there's people. There's a crowd, but yeah, but it's not, it's not so packed that you guys are getting pushed around by him. Okay, so I'm going to say, you think that's where, uh, where Dez was selling his information? Oh, yeah, it's an Not the Armada? There's one way to find out. We could always stick our stick our nose. All right, I'm gonna walk over to the door and uh, press my ear against it and see if I can hear any rum like people talking or anything going on inside. Uh, as you do that, are you gonna like sneak up to the door or are you just walking right up to it all casually? I'm gonna again like flip my collar up to hide my face a little bit and kind of move gingerly through the little bit of crowd that's left, not to draw too much attention to myself. Right, roll, roll, I'm not just making a beeline straight for the door. Roll a spot, you said. Yeah. From here or the door? From there. All right. As you approach the door, you notice a security camera kind of tucked away in the corner by the door, watching the entrance. Though you can't tell if it's in operation or not, you just see it. Is it like up on the ceiling or is it where is it? Um, how can I make a? Can I just ping? Surely it comes out on a stalk. <laughs> like this corner right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
It's like above the door, aimed down towards the door. Okay, well, can I just kind of turn my back to the camera and still press my head against the door to listen? Sure. Roll a listen check. Mm. You hear voices. Uh, they sound panicked, but you can't hear what anyone's saying. Okay. Well, I'm going to grab my comm link and say, uh, sounds like if there are Imperials in here, they're, uh, they're having quite the day. All right, I guess I'll... Are you guys still walking down the street? Is this happening? Yeah, or what? I'm going to keep going. Um, see if I can spot Car that. Stop right there. Just, that's where I was going to stop anyway, but yeah. I'm going to sort of slow down a little as I'm passing behind him, so he's got a bit of cover. Uh -huh. I'm stopping here so I can keep an eye on everyone. You see that Trandoshan reappear, and he looks pissed. <laughs> I'm going to step out from the door, like, back towards the street. Like, I just poked my head in for a, for a few seconds, and then I was like, oh, yeah, shit's going on in there. And then I step back, like, off the curb or whatever. He looks pissed, and he's, like, muttering to himself, walking this way. He walks right past you. I'm going to call out to him and say, hey, are you okay? You don't look so well. Friend. He completely ignores you. Dang. Rude. He walks all the way up this street. I don't see him moving. Uh, the one to the left, he's only in the top left corner now. Do you see him now, Kurgle? I see him stood in the doorway still. Uh, no, the one with the gun. Here, wait. Yeah. This one uh, up here. Ah, uh, man. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry. He started down here. Aha, uh -huh. got you. And walked past cart. All the way up to here, and he goes into this building. Hmm. As he was uh, turning the corner to cart, you saw him uh, takes he takes his blaster off his his belt. Um, I think we need to go into the uh, building to the north. That that was what was that building again? It's like a hotel, rundown yeah. hotel apartment. Are I you take on my your comm link. link? Yeah, I open up my comm link and I say, um, just spotted uh, our Trando friend brandishing his blaster and he's heading back into the hotel from the west wing. Uh, I think I'm going to pick up my pace and try to catch up to uh, Dak. Ro, you'd probably be in front of me, right? You'd be, probably be caught up to him. So what do you guys think? Should we head into the hotel or head into the office? I'm not so, really sure. You've seen a that Trandoshan that just crossed the street, draw his weapon, and enter that office to the north. Okay. Well, it's not like he just drew it, and it's not exactly like he was brandishing it, but it was not holstered, I can tell you that much. Um, and he looked pissed. We, we need to find to... Dez. Can we actually yeah. raise Dez on our comp link? You know like, he has one. This channel. He'd probably be saying something if he was on the comm channel with that. Look, I didn't know if, like, out. we'd... Yeah, I mean, that's it. There's just one uh -oh. channel, right? There's not, like, different... Four of them now. Oh, man. Do they... Well, can we see them from there? Can we Car see those people coming out from where we're standing? Yes. You can see a stream of Trandoshans come out of this side door. Whoa. Looks like something's going down. There are six of them. They are... Three of them have blasters, and three of them have vibro swords. Do you and reckon they start this Trando, marching down the street. Do you reckon the Trandoshan outside this uh, hotel knows about the small army coming this way? <laughs> Prob probably. Shit. You guys gonna do anything? You just gonna stand by and watch? I'm I'm gonna stand right here and, and watch them march down the street. I'm not gonna get in their way. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna try to like, walk past them. I, I'm gonna close up on the rest of the group, and I'm gonna draw just not brandish it, but just draw my pistol. So I'm ready to defend myself if they're like, let's kick off. I'm just gonna m walk up a couple more meters and lean on these like canisters or whatever's again, and just watch. There's still other people on the street. 
other than oh yeah so the other yeah, people yeah. on the street are basically parting like the like a parting sea as these small mm-hmm. army of trandoshans just so march i i look at one of the people that is parting ways for them and i tap them on the shoulder and i'm like what who are these guys what are they doing? gather information Um, the person is very afraid, kind of cowers down, uh, against the wall and is basically trying to like hide her face and is like, the Trandoshans, they, they run this hotel. They're like, they're like a a gang. They, they run this whole sector. I look at Bendek and I say, you thought the street smelled bad before. (laughs) Oh my God. Space racism. (laughs) (laughs) Spacism. Don't forget they want Star Wars people. without a bit of space races. That's true. All right, so they're just they're just going then. Oh yeah, no, they don't. They pay no attention to you guys at all. Hmm. I'm gonna grab my comm link and uh, say, should we uh, see what's going on in that room they came out of, or you want to follow? I'm going for the. Uh, going, I'm gonna see where they came from. I say over yeah. the comm. I agree. All right. I'm going to go with you guys. I'm going to start walking behind you guys. Yeah, I'm going to push up as well. Uh, Dak, are you holding on that corner right there? Or are you continuing? Okay. So I'm going to come up to the door and examine it. I guess. Kurgle and Andrew, since you two are lagging behind, roll spot checks. All right, Andrew, you see the group of Trandoshans go into this building. Hmm. You're the only one that sees them go in there. All right, I'm going to grab my comm link and tell the group. Yo, I saw those that those Trandos just walked into that that building we were sneaking around next to, the Imperial one. I don't know what they're doing in there. It, it didn't sound like there was fighting going on, but it looks like there might be soon. Gum attracts gum. Uh, all right, sorry, Car. What did you say you were doing at the door? I'm just gonna examine, see if there's a, a simple way to open open the door. Oh yeah, it's just standard uh, keypad entry. Just open, close. Okay, well, then I'm going to press the keypad to open the door. All right. Do I have enough time to catch up to them? Yep. Oh, look, more Trandosha. All right, as you walk in, the Trandosha behind the counter says, leaps up from his chair and basically goes, hold it. Hey, we're looking to uh, get a room for the night. What are your uh, What are your rates of this beautiful hotel? And I'm just going to try uh, to talk over them and, and be extra friendly. Just won't shut up. Let's just see. Roll my eyes. Okay, make a bluff check. <laughs> nice. Jeez. The Trandoshan in, in basic with the, with a slight hissing goes, No vacancy. Ah. Well, boys, looks like we're going to have to find another place to crash for the evening. They've got no vacancy. And I say it like, I look over at him as I say it, as I'm making fun of his accent. That actually makes me laugh. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the two sitting on the couches seem very perturbed by this and stand up. The one looks at you and goes, see yourself out. Yeah, before we go, I just have one question. Do you, any of you know um, if you've seen a guy named Desmond around here? They look at each other, confused. Uh, roll, gather information. God, when are we going to get to the part where I do some fighting? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm going to egg these guys on. I mean, do you want to no. start the fight? No, I don't want to. Hot Dog, you're, uh, you seem to be the closest to them. Uh, do you do anything in reaction to them getting up? And they look like they might be getting ready to reach for their weapons. I think I'll roll intimidate. You're just gonna f- you're just gonna flex, Wookie <laughs> roar. Yeah. Um, Trandoshans are. Four. Go ahead. Uh, Six, seven feet tall. 
They're pretty just tall. Hot dog roll intimidate. History between right. Hot dog roll intimidate and Kurgle, since you're still outside, roll listen. Whoa, that was... What the hell was that? Two rolls. Oh, you rolled it rolled twice. Two. That's alright, we'll take, take the, the first, first one. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, okay. So, first things first. Kurgle, you, uh, you can hear all the way down the street at that, um supposed imperial facility that you actually didn't see the Trandoshans go into, only Andrew did, but you can hear what sounds like blaster fire coming from inside. Straight on the comms, I'll be, there's a blaster fire from the imperial compound, just to the south. I, I imagine um, everyone who's in earshot of our comlinks, including all the Trandoshans, just heard. Yep. Hmm. Uh, let's see, actually. Only the two closest to Hot Dog did, so the one behind the counter did not. But the two closest to Hot Dog immediately pulled their Vibro Swords. Wait, I rolled Intimidate. What happened? Yeah, don't forget oh. that. Yeah, it was a natural 20. It wasn't no, a natural it, it 20, was, but it was, it was still not, a 20. Oh, it was a 20, but it wasn't a natural, I don't know. Alright, so... Hmm, how's the best way to handle this? Yeah, okay, so they pull their swords and run this way. <laughs> They're running towards the other door. And the one behind the counter is like, No, wait for me! And he goes running around the counter to catch up with them. Can I hop over the counter and just look around and see if there's any, like, information sitting out of any kind or... or credit chips or a gun yeah, or anything? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so you hop over the counter... The other Trandoshan doesn't even notice you hop over as he's running away. Yeah, that's why I did it. Try to grapple him. Hold on. Well, uh, let's do Andrew first. So first, Andrew, roll a quick search. Yeah, let him go. Maybe we can find some money in here. Anything. I want to take something. No, there I doesn't wanna... appear to be anything on this side of the counter. There is a, uh, a, a terminal. Like a computer terminal, but nothing laying out yeah. that you could take. I'm going to try and punch into that terminal if I can. While they're all distracted down the other end of the yeah. building, I want to see if the terminal can say? I guess I'll say across the counter, I'll be like, come come mess with this computer and see what so, you can do. I... Okay, hold on. So while you're saying that, Cart, uh, Car what did you say you want to do the Trandoshan that's running by? I want to try to grapple uh, to uh, to grab that, uh, that Trandoshan as he's trying to run. Technically, I would at least get the attack of opportunity if he's running past me. That is a... That's, I don't know if you can do that out of combat, but there is okay, a grapple uh, rule. Tripping. I don't know if I want to spend the time to look up the actual grapple rule or just have you make an attack on him. Oh, wait, here it is. Grappling means wrestling and struggling hand-to-hand. -hand. Uh, yeah, okay. So... To do a grapple check, it's your base attack bonus, plus your strength modifier, plus your special size modifier, which for you is zero. Okay, so just roll a strength check? Uh, it says grab. You can make a melee touch attack to grab the target, which provokes an attack of opportunity. If you fail to hit the target, you fail to start the grapple. But I have martial arts, so it does not provoke an attack of opportunity. It doesn't actually say that, unless it's under the martial arts feat uh, description that says grapples. Unarmed. Okay, I know. I don't know about grapples, but I do know that in the martial arts section, it says that making um, an unarmed, unarmed attack does not unarmed provoke. attacks does not provoke an attack of opportunity against armed opponents. But armed opponents who make an attack, or sorry, unarmed opponents who make an attack against the martial artist, do take an attack of opportunity, even if the martial artist is unarmed. So unarmed normally. So basically, unarmed is treated like you. Your fists are a weapon, right? So, so normally, un normal unarmed always provokes an attack of opportunity. Martial arts unarmed is like you're wielding a weapon, so it does not provoke an attack of opportunity. And unarmed attacks against a martial artist do provoke an attack of opportunity. Because I guess because you're proficient in it, yeah. Right, and as yeah, yeah using your fists as a weapon is you're better. I'm at gonna it, so. I'm gonna say I I totally get where you're coming from. 
because martial arts feet description does not specifically say that grappling does not provoke one and because uh you're not technically i don't know where my mind is going i think um yeah you're not just like trying to hit the person you're actually like basically trying to hold them down i don't think it's the same yeah i think you still would is is he armed though does he have a weapon out no you're right so go ahead and do it and then we're gonna have to roll initiative so a strength roll uh yes plus your base attack bonus which is what one Okay, so that was 12 plus my three strength is 15 plus one more would be 16 then. All right, yeah, you got him. So what I want to do... So you you basically... uh, All right, go ahead, describe it. Yeah, what do you do to him? Okay, Um, so I see the couch next to me. I see that he is uh, running past me. I grab him by the torso, and I want to kind of like... I don't know if I may need another strength check for this, but I want to kind of like flip him over on that couch, pin him on his, like, on his stomach and um, place my knee uh, between his shoulder blades while holding his arm, holding his arm out. Sick. Kind of like in a pin, a All right. pin move. You said the one next to you or the one in front the one of you? next to me. So kind of like flipping him over the, yeah, the, the couch next. All right, there you go. Even though your token is below his, you're kind of holding him down on that couch. All right. And so... You can decide if this is intimidate or not, but I'm going to tell him I'm I'm done screwing around. I want some answers. What's going on in the Imperial Embassy? Uh, all right. So as you do this move, he he cries out a Trandoshan, you know, like, ah, get off me. Um, roll gather information and I'll give you a, a plus four on it for, you know, having pulled that maneuver off. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, uh, does somebody else want to talk to him? You you need to either put points in the in the gather information or you need to like have somebody else do the interrogating from that. That's okay. On. I'll be the bad cop, oh. somebody else can be the good cop. Yeah, that's usually me. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. So what did you ask for him? Ask him again. Tell me what's going on in the Imperial office or embassy or whatever. He he basically I I have no idea what you're talking about. While he's while he's yelling at him saying no, I don't know what you're talking about. Um uh, can I just like pick up something off the desk? Is there anything on the desk at all like a a book, like literally any object? No, you rolled a search and the results of your search were nothing. I mean, you don't appear ah, to see anything right. there. Okay. Right. Never mind then. So since he's not being useful, I'm going to start pressing my knee into his back and lifting up on his arm. As you're doing this, two Trandoshans come out from an area of the hotel that you haven't been haven't uncovered yet and see you on top of their brother and pull their weapons. Go ahead and roll initiative, everybody. Oh boy. I'm going to uh, I'm going to shuffle some tokens around just to get everybody back aligned with the grid. I don't even know if, Before... where the initiative button is. It's under speed. Uh, it's just to the right of your character oh, that attributes here. Thank you. Um, while that was sort of happening, I was making for this terminal. Have I got to the other side of this desk before we're rolling? In yeah, game? yeah, that's fine. So we'll put, um, we'll put. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. No, no, it's good. Go ahead and do next to uh, Andrew. That way, we're all on individual grid spaces since we're going to be in combat. It just makes it easier. What do you want me to do? Move? No, no, no. Sorry. I was going to say, putting putting Kurgle actually on a grid space. Oh. You came around the counter, I guess? I sort of was going over it, but I guess I've got to wherever the console is. Oh, oh, so, I'm sorry. You leapt over it? That was the intention after... Okay. Um... No, that's fine. Then we'll do it this way. There we go. We'll just move you guys around. So you're closer to the console now. Sweet. I imagine a solo esque like hip slide across the top. Alright, let me let me write down these initiatives. So we had cart with eleven, hot dog with nineteen. Okay. Um so let's see, hot dog, what are you doing next? Even though you're not first in initiative, everybody else has kind of been doing things with except you. Um are you doing anything? Say again. Can we see those two coming? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna draw my 
blaster. Okay, um, so Cart's the only one with his weapon drawn. I'm sorry, Hot Dog is the only one with his weapon drawn. <laughs> Technically, I still have my pistol out from earlier. Oh, but, that's right, you did. So Kurt also has it. The thing, the first thing I'm going to do is holster it while I start tapping on this computer. So that's not going to be helpful. <laughs> All right. Um, since you just leapt over, Andrew, you're all right. No, fuck it. We're we're in combat now. So Hot Dog, you are uh, first. You've got your weapon. What do you want to do? Uh, those two are heading towards us, right? Yes, the they were. Gone. They were heading towards the door out the uh, the door. Those other three Trandoshans ran out, but when they saw, they saw Kart with his, uh, yep. Now they changed their direction. They're coming to you. You have uh, the one, this one, this one in the top. He's got a blaster. This one's got a sword. Okay. Um, I'm going to. I'm not going to aim it at them, but I'm going to hold it where they can visibly see it and see what happens when they get closer. Okay. Um, this is something that we didn't really, that we kind of talked about when we did our practice session, um, but we didn't actually use it. You can ready an action. So you can say, like, no. I'm going I'm to aim my blaster at this Trandoshan, and if he, you know, gets within a certain distance or if he tries to attack somebody, I'm going to shoot him. Do you want to do that? You have to be very no. specific. Go ahead. Yes. I did that. Uh, I did that with the the guy that was escaping the room. I remember I trained my gun oh, on yeah, the doorway. Oh yeah, just didn't happen. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, I will. I'll do that. I'll ready my weapon and I'll have it aimed at the the one with the blaster. Okay. Um. So you technically don't have line of sight on him right there, but that's fine. If you want to uh, wait for him to come into view, or do you want to move so that you can actually see him? I will move down here. Keep in mind, I can't shoot through you. Yep. Okay, that's good. So I you're aiming. The way. You're aiming at the one with the blaster. And what's the condition that you want to set for firing on him? Uh, if he, if he aims at uh, Bendak, I'll fire. Okay. Because they're Trandoshans, and it doesn't take much for me to fire on them. How about? Uh, do you want to just say if he? If he takes aim at anyone, like if he if he raises his blaster to fire, you want to fire, or specifically Bendak? A uh, Bendak or me? <laughs> All right. Self preservation. All right, uh, Cart, you're next. All right. Um, I just pulled up uh, coup de grace on the um, player's handbook. It's page one sixty. You say coup de grace? Is that what you're doing? Coup de coup de grace. Coup de grace. I don't. Know. Yes, coup de grace. Gra. That's badass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, this Trandoshan is useless. I'm going to snap his neck. <laughs> Good grief. Hold on. What was the page for it? 164. Or possibly 165. There's a picture of Qui-Gon um, looking like he's going to duel Darth Maul. Yep, I got it. All right. As a full run in action, allowing no movement other than a two-meter step, you can use a melee weapon to deliver a coup de grace to a helpless opponent. You can also use a ranged weapon, provided you are adjacent to the target. You automatically hit and score a critical hit. If the defender survives, you must make a fortitude save, DC 10, plus the amount of damage inflicted, or die. Whoa. Oh, Ooh. I told you that shit's badass. Yeah. So, so what do you guys like better? Should I draw my vibro sword? Oh, wait, no. It's a full round action, so i got to use melee um, on my martial arts um, yeah so yeah i'm gonna snap his neck all right so let's see <laughs> metal so what do you roll you automatically score a critical hit but yep if the defender survives he must make a fortitude save so how does a critical hit work again is it you it roll just kills a non-heroic character Oh, so okay. I don't think you even need to roll because if you you automatically hit and score a critical hit, and he's a non-heroic character, which means critical hits automatically kill, so he's just dead. Bam! Dude. Hell yeah! Man, they're gonna need a new cipher. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I'm so gonna, I'm gonna look so, across the room at him doing that and kind of go and like, kind of like uh, not not like gasp, but kind of like you know pull your head back a little and open your eyes real wide. And I'm gonna turn to to uh, Trod and be like. Did you see that? <laughs> and just kind of laugh. <laughs> that shit's real. <laughs> so go ahead, describe it. All what right, do you do so exactly? 
so I'm keeping my knee on his back. I let go of his arm with my free hand, and um, while holding my other hand on the back of his head, um, I reach with my now free hand towards the front of his head, and I just twist. All right. Uh, with a loud crack, his head spins around, and he is no more. Cart, that's brutal, man. That is a full round action. Uh, so yep. you do get a two meter step if you want to scoot yourself one square in any direction. And that's all you I'm get taking, to do. I'm, I'm doing that to take cover. Okay. I look over at Cart and I just smirk and nod. <laughs> <laughs> well, was he, is he in line of sight of uh, the Trend Ocean? Can the Trend Ocean oh, see him just snap, snap his neck? Oh, yeah, they saw it. Yeah, they both saw it. Well, I would imagine they're going to fire. <laughs> All right, so next up, it's the ranged dude. So he's got a blaster pistol in hand. He's going to run up to in front of this door here, and he's going to try and take a shot at Hot Dog. Now, because, Hot Dog, you had that uh, ready action, you get to make the attack first, and now you scoot down to this position in the initiative chain. So uh, Cart will get to go before you next turn. Okay. That's how that works. And Andrew, or, uh... Oh, no, dude, sorry. No, no, no. Andrew, it's your turn. Sorry. Yeah. Disregard everything I just said. Andrew, you're next. Edit. <laughs> uh, I'm going to... My usual move, which is reach down with my right hand and fling my the side of my trench coat open. And, hey, now. Hey, now. And unholster my blaster. And I'm going to... Uh, how tall is this desk I'm, in fr I'm behind? It's about one meter, so it, it blocks, like, half of your body. All right, can I take a knee behind it and rest my arm on the flat surface of the top? That'd be, like, three-quarters sure. cover, too, right? It should be, yeah. Yep. Uh, you I'm don't gonna... have line of sight of anybody, but, yeah, you can do that. No, but I'm just going to aim it, you know, where's the arrow? This way. Okay. Just, like, because I don't want to hit cart, but I do know that shit's happening uh, down this hallway. So I'm going to, like, just prepare to back them up and aim this way. Okay. Um, I just noticed, actually, by the way, that you don't have a perfect representation of what this place is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reveal all the areas that are the same room as the one you're in for you. So you can see this. Oh, shit. Well, is it too late for me to change my mind, then? No, that's why I'm doing this. Well, I'm going to take cover behind the same thing, like I said, rest my arm on top of the counter, uh, like I usually do, and aim down to this corner here. Because it looks like a lot of these doors aren't really visible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make these doors pop out a little bit better. Mm. Oh, that's nice. And then, yeah, that one there. I can kind of tell where the other two are because of the light coming out. There you go. Okay. Is um, this a doorway to my left, this very north it, part? Because it's it's cut off from on the Yeah, no, I it's can't... the edge of the map. Just it's those... supposed it is a doorway technically, but just imagine there's a wall there. Are those okay, doors thanks. all closed? Yes. Okay. Alright, so I'm just gonna take aim at that corner down the hallway and get ready if anyone turns the corner. Okay. Um That's now it. it's the range dude's turn. So now he steps up in front of this door and aims at Hot Dog, which triggers Hot Dog's ready action. So Hot Dog, go ahead and roll an attack. Ooh. Good damage, but actually perfect damage. Yeah. It is unbelievably perfect damage, <laughs> but unfortunately the shot just misses. Hot Dog levels his blaster at him and fires and the shot goes right past his head and almost like one of those Hollywood slow motion like it would singe his hair if he had hair but doesn't hit him hits the uh hits the wall of the hotel behind and adds yet another scorch mark to the many blaster holes already on the walls of this place I can't believe a dump like this is sold out no vacancy remember the uh, Trandoshan, having seen a blaster go straight past his head, is uh, a little shaken, but still fires on Hot Dog. And Hot Dog, what's your uh, 
AC. It's on the left underneath your abilities in the top left. 13. He misses. Good. Uh, Kurgle, you're up. So I, I imagine that I am going to tuck her in to the like corner of the console, trying to duck out of view as much as possible in cover, and try and like break into this computer console and see if I can get any juicy info out of it. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Use doing a uh, computer use is a full round action. I know that. Can Damn. I give him a word of advice while he's doing that? <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I'm going to tell Trod, uh, see if you can lock all these doors so nobody can get back in. We don't need these guys getting reinforcements. Mm. So I'll see what I can do. Cool. All right, so that uh, we'll have you do your, your little search for information first, and now that you have that, uh, we might be able to do that on your next turn. Uh, for now, though, yeah, you see a list of, it looks like, shipments. It doesn't specify what the cargo is, but it looks like a manifest of arrivals, like imports and exports. And there is a contact list, but it is encoded. So is there some kind of either removable storage that I can use, or I don't know if I'll have a terminal or something I can use to copy data off? Uh, I mean, it, I imagine in the films you have to like remove a piece of the equipment, right? To like, yeah, touch storage. So, or if there's some way of getting a printout of it, you know, I'm not. I'm so not unfortunately, here. you do not have a data pad to download the information to. You would need to have some sort of data pad to do that. Uh, I don't believe printouts exist in Star Wars. Yeah, that's the that's closest what I thing to it. So. I'll look for what is seemingly the most juicy bit of info that I can and try and commit that specifically to. Okay. Uh, or, you know, you can maybe try to not behind the desk because, well, unless you want to do a search in addition to Andrew's search because his result wasn't that great. Um, but if you try to find a data pad somewhere, uh, you can always come back later and do it. But all right. So you're trying to commit... Uh, so what do you want to commit? Try to memorize. Do you want to remember um, something about the shipments or something? Probably about this turn is just spent looking through the records to see if there is anything. I think that's either knowledge that will be well, like that might pay off later for us, or information about the situation we find ourselves in and what their motivation is. That's really what I'm looking for in the. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, most of it is in um, basic. However, the part about the contacts, uh, instead of having it encrypted, to make it just simpler, we'll say it's in Trandoshan. So you can't yep. read and write Trandoshan, can you? No. Yeah, so you have no idea what it says. Awesome. Uh, melee guys up. Okay. So next it is the, the last Trandoshan that you guys can see. One, two, three, four, five. And he actually can close with Hot Dog, and he's going to do a melee strike on Hot Dog. And as we all learned last time, that does not provoke an attack of opportunity because he stopped as soon as he entered Hot Dog's threatened area. Right. So Hot Dog, you said your AC was 13? Mm -hmm. Oh man, he swings at you with his Vibra Sword, but you just happen to like duck out of the way and it goes over you. He just misses. And he actually, Hollywood slow-mo, did trim your hair just a little bit. Yeah. Ooh. Now I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> now the rug comes off. All right, Cart, it's back to you. All right, having seen my uh, my friend is in trouble. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Uh, while all that was going on, the guys that went running out, one of them comes back in this door, and the other two, whoops, Ooh. pop up over here. Is that oh, door snap. open? The one yep. we came in? Yep. So we see them in the doorway. Yep. Shit. Now it's your turn, Cart. Oh uh, boy. Um Well And they're both all three of them have swords. Drawing a weapon is a uh an action. So I can't attack this round, but I am gonna draw my vibro sword and activate it with my uh free action. Okay. And I'm going to step in place to try to guard um, my friends behind the desk. So if the Trandosians want to get at them, they got to go through me. For okay. 
Card's gonna be a martyr in episode one. <laughs> I'm gonna say oh, over the com link actually, but I I need a date. I need the data pad over. If you if you find a data pad on one of these guys, bring it here. All right. I'm not gonna respond over the data pad because, or sorry, over the com link because I'm right next to you, pretty much. So I'm just gonna right. say copy. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm going to stand there as I'm as I'm scanning down the hallway with my blaster at the ready. I'm going to say, yeah, 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 sure, whatever you want, yeah. <laughs> like we don't have more important Andrew, things to do. It is your turn. All right, so are they entering the room, or can I shoot out this doorway yep, here? Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, I'm gonna when I hear them approaching the doorway, I guess I'll I'll turn my attention towards the doorway and uh, fire with my blaster pistol. Okay, go for it. And I'm just clicking my button here for my blaster pistol, right? Under my ranged weapons. Yep. Will that do my hit and everything? It should, I believe, if it's programmed right. Which I think it should be. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. Nope. Great. Just like uh, just like Hot Dog shot, the shot goes just wide of the dude. What, are we stormtroopers? Apparently, actually, S seemingly, <laughs> yeah. Attack eight, even with the uh, with a slight bonus for leaning on the uh, counter, it's still just wide. Well, no, I wouldn't even be leaning on the counter because I I turned I around to face the other doorway. Yeah. All right. So I would. I'm just. I'm just basically now crouched behind the thing. You haven't moved yet, so you have a couple options. <laughs> You can either move, or if you want to make this, because um, the blaster pistol is a multi-fire weapon, you can, if you want to do a full round action and fire a second shot with it, you can. It will just be at a minus four uh, penalty. Okay, how do I You just do the same that. thing, and then we subtract four from it. All right, well, I'm going to fire another one. I'm going to shoot, miss, hit the wall or whatever, and go like, ah, shit, and then fire again. Yep. Price. Nope, still no. <laughs> ah. Good try. So, if I'm not mistaken, I'm just trying to, you know, make sure that um, we're reading the rules right. I don't want to be a rules lawyer or anything, but I think multi shot, it's multi shot or multi fire. So, there's a perk, or I'm sorry, a feat called multi shot, but a right. multi fire then, is a weapon mode. Right. So, I think he would need to, I mean, just kind of rules lawyering here, but I think he needs to switch to the weapon mode, multi-fire, right? And then each shot is like a minus four, right? That is, is correct. just the second one? Oh. Um, but switching weapon modes is a free action, so I just kind of gave that to him. Oh, okay. And okay. technically, the first shot, since it missed anyway, even if we applied the minus four to it, it would have missed regardless. If he had hit the first one, then he would not have had that ability. Okay. But you're you're correct. When you do a multi fire, it's both shots get a minus four. Uh, that brings us to hot dog. Since uh, the guy unless, took a swing. unless Andrew wants to take a two meter step, because you get to do that no. with the full round. No, I'm gonna stay right here. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, hot dog. So since the guy took a swing at me and just missed, I'm I assume he's close enough that. If I reached out, I could touch him. That's correct. So as I dodge and he trims my hair, I bring my blaster up and stick it in his ribs and fire. Would that give you, do you get like a point blank bonus or something? You do. I got to look that up real quick. <laughs> I think it's only plus nice. one. A plus one to hit or on damage? A plus one to hit, which can help, you know, in point blank range. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think there's a point blank feat that increases that to the uh, 10 meter um, that is already the initial shot range for blaster right. pistols. I think you're right. Point, okay, page 153, point blank range. A target that's two meters away is considered to be at point blank range. You get a plus one bonus on attack and, da and damage rolls. So plus one to attack, cool. plus one to damage when making a point blank shot with a ranged weapon. The point blank shot feet increases the range of a point blank shot to 10 meters. Perfect. Yep, there you go. So you get a plus one on both your attack and all three, uh, no, damage roll. So it would just be a plus one after the three D6s, not a yeah. plus one to each D6. Okay. I'll roll for it. Yep, go ahead, and then we'll just add one to both totals. Ooh. Oh. 
Shit. No. Still no good. Reza, like, Matrix dodge that or something. That was Dude. Awful. Yeah, you guys, you need better dice. I don't know what to tell you. I guess you can say when he was raising his pistol to try to aim it at his gut, he, I guess he may, maybe he fired a little too early and hit the floor. You know, Green Dojan swatted it. So yeah, you, um, so here's what happens. So he swings at you, you ducked under it, and as you go to aim your blaster at his rib cage, he knocks it out of the way with his elbow, and your shot goes wide. There you go. Um, you can do a couple different things as well. So you will kind of let you do that multi-fire retro thing that I just let Andrew do if you want. Or if you want to try to run, you can move away from him. But if you take uh, more than uh, more than a two meter step away from him, he gets a free attack on you. More than two meters? So how far is that? Two block? Yeah, you, would only, you can only move one block basically without triggering that. Okay. Um... Doesn't really seem like it'd be advantageous because he's still within point blank range. Right. So yeah, unless you like dodged away onto the sofa, clambering over the corpse of his dead mate. <laughs> Would it give me a, a advantage of having the higher ground? <laughs> I just that think you'd be out of melee. Right melee. Right yeah. He would have mm. to close in with you if he wants to attack you again. All right, I'm going to jump there. All right, while you do that, do a, uh, actually, I should say, before you do that, roll an acrobatics check. Oh, oh that's not God. a thing. Wait a minute. Not in this. Uh, 3.5. <laughs> no. Dear All right, dude. then do a climb. Climb check. Climb. Why not just a jump check? But okay, that works too. All right, yeah, you get there. You climb He's over the agile, sofa Wookie. and over the dead transition <laughs> corpse. <laughs> He didn't skip leg day. Oh boy. We grew up in trees. Oh, Every true. Day was leg day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the ranged uh, the ranged Trandoshan goes next. He moves up to here. He kind of crouches down behind the sofa and takes a shot at Kurgle, who's tucked Wouldn't that in. be two movements? What's that? Is oh, it him hmm, moving the up crouching. and then crouching would be two movements, wouldn't it? All right. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Cart? Crouching as a move action? It doesn't look like he moved five spaces. Plus, is crouching or something like that? Wouldn't that be more like a free action? I'm not exactly. Maybe, yeah. Hold on. I got actions in combat. That thing that I made earlier. Let's see. Yeah. Move actions is move, climb, uh, draw, holster a weapon, open a door, pick up an item, retrieve a stored item, move a heavy object, stand up from prone, load a weapon, use a skill. Free actions. No, it actually doesn't say. I mean, it seems perfectly reasonable to me that it. Yeah, I'm not fun. saying I don't want him to do it. I was just curious. I wasn't sure how it worked. No, it was a good question, and I'm glad I had this handy. So, no, <laughs> that's what he does. He moves two spaces, four meters, which is half a move action, and we'll say he uses the other half a move action to kneel. Okay. And uh, Kurgle, he doesn't like you being behind the counter, although he can only see you just barely. You get a cover bonus. Sweet. But he's going to take a shot at you. You have... That's got my attention. Are you, like, kind of crowd... You said you're kind of hunched down behind the counter, right? I would say he's at least uh, three quarters cover. Yep. I think I'd have to have probably the top half just exposed because I don't imagine the computer terminal is below the desk, so as covered as I can be to access it. Alright, I'll say it's between one half and three quarters, so you get like a plus five. So what's your AC? Um, it's 14. Nice. Jesus, alright. That would apply for me too as well, because I'm behind the same thing, right? Yeah, alright, he missed. Ah, sweet. So his, <laughs> shot, his shot hits the desk and the terminal flickers, but remains online. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, man. I love that. <laughs> uh, next up is Kurgle. I know that um, Talon did a quick search, but I'm I'm going to have to pause in my computery search to just 
have a look around this desk and see if there is a um, like a data pad that I can use. All right. I believe searching is a full round action. Yeah, use a skills full round action. So go ahead, you can search, but that's going to be the only thing you can do. It's all good. Do what you got to do. All right. Gotcha. Uh, ten. That's worse than what I did when you told me there was nothing. You rolled a seven. <laughs> <laughs> I you rolled a seven. Desk. Where? Because I'm scrolling up in the chat. I rolled a, a twelve. Search check 12. The bluff was a 7. Oh, shoot. I wonder if I was looking at the die and not the chat. Because remember how we had that issue where the die didn't actually show the right result? Yeah, right. The die just the... shows the raw dice results. Oh, you gotta yeah, look yeah the, the chat, chat shows with all your lot. bonuses. All right, fine. Sorry, then. I fucked up. I'll take full responsibility for that. Yeah. And I will say that, uh, okay, so there's no data pad on the desk. But there is like a storage disk. Ooh, a data disk. Yeah. So like a disk that you could insert to the computer, transfer the data onto, and then you wouldn't be able to access it without putting it into another computer. Yeah, totally. We'll swipe that disk, jam it in the computer, and the first thing I want is that set of uh, stuff I can't read because it's in their language. All right. We'll say... Uh, I'll allow you to just do all that as like a free action because you grab the thing, you throw it in and you click transfer and it starts Sweet. doing that. Yeah. That actually would have changed what happened a while ago because when, <laughs> if I had seen that before I was actually going to throw something from the desk at the Trandoshan that cart was messing with. He, he wouldn't answer his questions. I was going to throw something from the desk and be like, just tell him what he wants. And I was going to wax, like, throw something off the table and hit him. So here you go. So, <laughs> so good thing flex, that didn't happen. <laughs> I'm going to flex my DM skills and say that when the Trandoshan shot the desk, it popped open a drawer that was locked, and that's where he found the data disk. Boom. Oh, right. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Red yeah, lo lovely. All right. To be saved. I love this. All is well in the world again. I love this so much. Uh, okay, it's the melee Trandos turn. So this one's gonna step up and attack Hot Dog again. Let's see, and he hits this time. Ooh. Let's see how much damage is going to be done. First, oh, I guess it's not even first blood. It's just like first successful attack roll. No. Yeah, I got first blood. Two d6. Did he bleed? All right, he does five damage. So what you need to do, Hot Dog, on your character sheet, at the top in the middle where it says Vitality, you want to take that current total down five points. Okay. No, no, no. Um, just the, the current. Sorry, not the total. Oh. I, I should have misspoke. So total is like your max. So yeah, okay. take turn. There you go. Perfect. Current's down to two. Total seven. Perfect. Nope. All right. Yep, he's a squishy wookie. Um, Not as squishy as me, jeez. This one moves in on Cart. Cart, what's your AC? 17. Holy shit. <laughs> You're less squishy. He misses. This one runs in, holds his uh, sword over his head, and he's hissing like, and swings at you. I said no vacancy. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, I get it. And he hits. 2d6. Oh, no. He does seven damage. Oof. Ouch. That brings your total up down to what? Hold on. It's the vitality current. Um, I, I, I don't wish to share that. <laughs> it's all right, I can see it anyway. Yeah. Hold on, I'm just messing around with the the D20 um, number bubbles that I that we can make because I remember that. So I'm at eight. You said it took minus seven, right? Yep. It leaves me with uh, no, no, uh, five. Okay. So once you once you lose vitality and start taking wound damage, is when we have to start making rolls to make sure you stay conscious. But so far, you're all fine. Um, this one in the doorway down here, he's going to run up this way. 
And that's all he does. It's now back to cart. Again? The... Dude, like... it's been forever since I took a turn. I feel Come like on. it's been forever since everybody. This is crazy. Yeah, lots of combat. Mm -hmm. Lots of characters. So right, many well, people. I am going to just lay right into the Trandosian that hit me. Which one hit me? Uh, the one on the bottom left. Okay, so I am just... I'm out for revenge. This guy hit me hard. I'm going to hit him. Does Cart have a health bar now? Yeah, actually, I'm going to do the same thing for Hot Dog. Everyone can do that for themselves. If you click on your token and then click on the gear, what I did was the... Uh... Oh, look, I can even put my character name there. I don't know who can see that. I can't even see that. But if you click on the, the gear, and then you can look at the bars 1, 2, and 3... Mm -hmm. I put my vitality in bar one and my wounds in bar three because I like red for wounds, green for vitality. And then it should show the, the it should show, you know, how much uh, vitality current and total you can have. And uh, same thing for wounds. Right. But in total. wouldn't it make more sense if we didn't know how much you had, you know? Like, we wouldn't know when well, the, you're near death, the, right? The roll 20 DM is supposed to be able to make it so that each of us can only see our own health bars. Oh, okay. So yeah, that only, I can only mess with he, that later on. That only, only he and each of us can see. But, okay, it's fine for this session. So yep. I'm going to attack the uh, the Trandosian in front of me. That, that, uh, that this one, right? I'm going re to retaliate, yes, with my Vibro Sword. All right, go ahead. Yo. You take your sword. All right, you describe. You killed him. So how do you want to do it? All right, so um, where did he hit me? Oh, right. So he swings at you, and he basically scrapes up your arm. Scrapes the blade goes arm. down the side of your arm. So I, so I, I, you know, look at my arm, kind of lift it up a little bit, see the blood running down of it, down it, and then look, glare him straight in the face, and um, you know, wielding my vibro sword in both hands, I just slash diagonally at him, and you cutting, cut, cutting deep, cut deep into him, retrieve your sword, and he collapses in a pile of bloody lizard, a blizzard, if you will. Blizzard. <laughs> Dak is a goddamn samurai, and I love it. And then I'm gonna look at the uh, with my free action, or you still have a move full round. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, can, I can't move. disengage, but you can disengage with a two meter step. You yeah, know, I suppose. Step back. But I don't. I don't want to disengage. I'm, All right, I'm you don't have to. My duty guarding my friend, but but is uh, intimidate or fear a full round action still? They are. Or? Okay. Yeah. Then I'm just gonna brandish my sword as a free action. You know, not not really trying to intimidate or fear him. Just challenge him. The other one's still standing. All right. Andrew, you're up. If I move over to this square, would this put me within point blank of him? Yep. But I'm still on the other side of the counter, right? Yes. However, I'm going to say this very carefully. I want you to, when you make that move, I want you to move yourself one square at a time, and I want you to be consider uh, which route you take. Go ahead. Don't forget, I got two guys that on, on me over here. Well, I already jumped over the counter once, so I was already here at one point, and I was already here when I first jumped over. And then I walked this way, boop, 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 and ended up here. So I'm gonna step, basically step right here, and then right to this side of the counter. Okay, you. Uh... You provoke an attack of opportunity when you move through his critic, his uh, threatened area there. But how can he take a melee swing at me if there's a, a half wall between us? You still get cover, but he still gets okay. to swing over the counter yeah. at you. Okay. For future uh, reference, though, if you would have done this... Went the long way? Yeah, it would have been fine. Okay. Um, what's your AC? Uh, 14. But I'm covered. Plus the cover. No, you're fine. You would have been hit if it, if you weren't behind the counter, but you're fine. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. All right, now I'm going to reach over the counter and fire right at his head. Because I'm point blank now. Because I'm frustrated because I missed those other two shots. Go ahead. Ooh, nat 20. Get wrecked. Crit hit. He... Ooh. 
You reach over, you aim right at his head, you squeeze the trigger, and now there is another scorch mark on the wall of the apartment behind him. Yes. I look over at Talon and I say, way to kill Steel. I'm just gonna, like... Well, he had a head. And kind of smirk, like, hey, you know... <laughs> you, ever, you can steal one of mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did he say? <laughs> steal one of mine. <laughs> so good. No, no, what did the Wookiee say? Because you can't understand me. <laughs> yeah, I'm Cart, just gonna Cart laugh. is the only one here who can't understand Hot Dog, by the way. He's the only one that doesn't have understand Shiri Wook. <laughs> so good. <laughs> All right. Um, that now it's uh, Hot Dog's turn. Um, can I use can I use the arm of the couch to cover it all? You're standing on the couch, so right. you actually get, I believe, you get an attack bonus. Wow! For having like high ground. ground. Yeah. Hold on. And attack roll like... mods. Attacker on high ground for melee, you get a plus one. Oh wait, you're ranged though. Sorry. So no, you get there is no bonus for that. Well, I don't have much of a choice other than to shoot at this guy with the sword. Yeah, so uh, I mean I you can. That. So there's a, you can also. Uh, I could retreat. You could but... retreat, and then what you can do is if you move away from him, you will provoke an attack of opportunity if you move more than one square. But then you can like continue your full movement. And then shoot at him from a distance. You know what I mean? If you want to risk that getting does hit. This, does this count as more than one square? No, that is one square. Okay. I'm going to move there and take a shot. Okay. I still don't understand why moving path away from someone would get you attacked. Dude, hot dog. <laughs> He's clearly shook. Oh. All right, so you aim at him. Uh, you know what, though? Roll again. Ranged? Uh, actually, just roll a d20. Uh, type in chat, or if you have a macro for d20, just do that. Nope. Oh, that's fine. All, All right, right, you missed anyway. Click the wrong thing. So your shot actually goes Ugh, right God. between both of those Trandoshans. You, you aimed at the melee one. It went wide to the left, but not wide enough to hit the ranged one. So you like threaded the needle with your shot. Good shot. <laughs> go. Who made this blaster Ewoks? Well, no, maybe you, maybe you'll have to go to a shop and buy a new one. Mm. All right. Um, as as all this is going on, uh, you hear a loud explosion, and the ground shakes violently. It's like an earthquake level shaking in an explosion. Um, outside the door, you can see the street outside lights up orange as there is a very clearly an explosion going off nearby. You don't know where exactly. That uh, good. When that happens, the Trandoshans look at each other and they start running. Hmm. And they're, they're basically booking it away from you right now. Yeah, that's right. You better run. Hey, uh, Dak? What? I don't think they're running scared from us. We should probably get out of here, too. <laughs> yeah, why's that? Oh, no reason. <laughs> I'm just going to shrug and turn away. Like, ah, why do I bother? <laughs> they disappear out the street, and you have no idea where they go. All right. I, uh... This, I uh... Hold on, wait. This door opens, and this angry-looking dude comes out looks around, sees the dead bodies, and runs out as well. Hmm. And disappears into the street. And that's gonna be it for now. Uh, you guys have any, like, small free actions Whoa. you want to do to wrap things up, can like, as a final thing tonight? Can I do a treat injury? <laughs> uh... Yeah. Do you, uh... Can I oh, hop the counter and over. assist him, like, like help him, like, hold him steady or something while he's taping himself up or something? Any kind of way to assist him while he's fixing Yeah, you himself? can add, I think you add, like, a plus two competence, comp, I can't say it, 
competency bonus? I also right. have tree injury and could assist them, although I'm gonna wait for this disc to finish copy. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't have tree injury, but I'm just thinking as another party member, I wasn't sure if there was the ability to actually assist someone with any type of task. I believe there is good question. But you know what? I believe there is, but we're gonna save that. Um we'll do that like between rounds or whatever. Uh, I'll look that up after we end the video so we can figure that Thank out you. and then we'll just go over what happened next time. Plus I think you need I think you need like a med kit, right? I don't think you could just use yeah. it. Uh so we'll we'll get back to that. However, most healing in D and D and the see this is where I kinda get away from the the rule book on healing. Most healing is done between adventures. So like as long as you guys don't get into a fight for like another day or two or something, like you get all your health back. You have to just rest. You have to right. take like a long rest. Well, I'm well in the middle of this adventure, we could literally just go to the cantina and just chill for a couple hours and call it up. Yep. And then you get all your yeah. health back. Unless the DM decides he wants somebody to storm in the door when in the middle of it or something. <laughs> yep, the DM could be a dick like that. All right, so Car, I'm sorry, Kurgle, you, uh, your data finishes transferring to the disk and it pops out of the computer. Awesome. Just as a free action, I just want to, you know, turn off my vibro sword, sheathe it, and just kind of mumble to myself, just when it was getting interesting. All right, you do that. Um, as the disc pops out of the computer and Kurgle takes it, it uh, sparks and the computer dies. Wow. <laughs> Great job, buddy. Convenient. Well, I'm going to holster my blaster and sit on the couch. Yeah, I'm going to kind of take take this sleeve of my jacket and kind of like, you know, like clean off my gun a little bit. Just give it a little brush down and then holster it and put my jacket back on. Oh, can, we, can we search the bodies for anything? All four of you just roll one search check and we'll consider that you checking, like do, giving everybody a quick look, run over or look over. Okay. I bet you I find something. Come on. Why won't it let me roll? It is rolling. It just rolled you three times. Oh, shit. It, usually it lets me drag. Okay. Sorry. First one was 21. Hey, yay. Uh, first one was, first one was, no, first one was 11. First one, oh, first one was 11. I'm sorry. Mine was a 21. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> Hot Dog's first was a 20. It's actually oh, above yeah. Andrew's. That was above. Yeah, okay. I do see oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, because if you roll several things, it just shows underneath your name. It doesn't show a new entry. Right. That confused me first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it was a 20. Sweet. And I got a 21 as well. It's All right, weird, so... too, because when you click the roll button, it usually says, okay, drag to roll. And with that one, it doesn't. It just rolls automatically. So that was, I, kept, I kept clicking Yeah, it. you just click the button and it goes. It's cool. <laughs> um. All right, so you might want to write this down in case you or somebody forgets um hot dog you find in total 200 credits worth on credit chips andrew you find another 150 kurgle finds 50 cart finds 100 and amongst the three of you or four of you sorry uh you find one blaster pistol and two vibro swords so if you want to split those up however you want um, I don't have a melee weapon on me. I feel like any everyone else participating in combat. They should I feel like I'm the only one with a heavy blaster and not a blaster pistol. Well, that's like a D8 or something with the with the heavy one, right? But it's got a shorter yeah. range or something. I can't remember. Yep. I like my gun. I'm gonna stick with the one I've got. I if you guys want to just like add it to a collective gear pool, I've I've added it. Can to you have? Yeah. Can I've you have shared a, a Google Doc a melee? I've shared a Google Doc in the Discord, which is just my notes for the session, but you've all got edit proofs, so you can just okay. add to your own notes. I would okay. say just do that, and then you guys can discuss it in between episodes, how yeah. you want to divvy it up, or if you all just right. want to keep it in like a collective inventory, then maybe try to sell it when you guys go to a shop or something. Yeah, you can do that that's too. what I was going to suggest. Just take the haul, everyone pick up something and take it with us. Not necessarily you... to keep it personal. Can you carry a ranged and a melee at the same time? Yep. Okay. You can carry, you can't necessarily Though, wield right. them. Can't. Yeah, you can't wield them together. And right. Hot Dog, I'd have to look at your character sheet. 
Let me actually pull that up real quick. Um, oh, you are you are we uh, proficient with simple weapons. Yeah. Does the blaster pistol come with a holster? Yes, we'll say yes. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to take the pistol and strap it to my thigh. I could use a sidearm in case, I don't know, I ever drop my uh, heavy blast. All right, but that's going to be it for now. We're a little past our two-hour mark, but not much. Not bad. Uh, what do you guys think, just as an intro? Very fun. I already Good. Yeah, I'm excited fun. for the next one. I really enjoy this. Yeah, I like that. I think everybody got to at some point do something perform some sort of action you know outside of combat that was that that made sense to their character i thought that was fun like the stuff in the cantina how people were acting the things we did in the streets uh i think it, it was excellent and it was a lot of fun to watch you guys do that i kind of feel like we're a little off objective with you know messing around with these trandosians in the hotel but it's still hey that's yeah. planned for that's and there's there's stuff in all of these buildings that you haven't explored yet. So it, I was covered all my bases for wherever you guys wanted to go. There was going to be something for you to find there. I hope that's uh, exciting. Yeah, definitely I, I is. Love it. Yeah. I love, love that. All right. Well, I'm going to end the video now, guys. That's episode one. Um, for any of you watching this on YouTube, um, I know it's probably going to be quite a long time before you actually get to see what um, see this because I think we're going to try and record a few more episodes before we start making these public. But uh, that shouldn't keep you from commenting uh, if we break any rules and you want to you want to rule lawyer a little bit, feel free in the comments. Just know that uh, we probably won't get to react or respond to those for a few episodes at least. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Mobius One and the respectable Bantha crew <laughs> I named it right. A oh, remarkable yeah. Bantha. Sorry, remarkable Bantha. I thought it was respectable. You said it was respectable. All right, well, it's respectable now. Hold yes, <laughs> it's it respectable in my notes. I, I can confirm, respectable Bantha. I've just double checked the hint. Yeah. All right, classy. The crew of the respectable Bantha. We'll see you next time. <laughs>